Hello, my name is Host Eric. I'm talking with fans people. And today, I would like to talk to you about a video that we are currently making at this very moment entitled Describing a Problem versus Describing a Population. All right. So, I've gotten a certain amount of pushback on the ADD stuff. Not not huge amount. I like it. But uh, there are obviously some individuals who are quite attached to the notion that it is a disorder and it ought to be treated as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to clarify my exact position on this because I I am not saying because like okay for example when we when I made one of those videos Ian had put up a comment explaining that linked to evidence of these problems persisting into adulthood right. But that doesn't, that has nothing to do with whether or not it's a disorder. The fact that you can talk, you can find a population of individuals who have weaknesses in certain areas and track them and see that those weaknesses persist into adulthood does not prove that there's a disorder. So. Well, I, I think that it, it's not as black and white as disorder versus not disorder. Well, hold on, I'm not quite done with the whole, the whole laying out of my position yeah. before you counter it, okay? Fair enough. So, um, there's that point, which is, you know, uh, that the, the things that the, the studies showing that certain populations of people tend to share certain traits. So, what, they, what basically the studies show is that if somebody has uh, impulsiveness, they're likely also to have, in general, they're likely also to have, um, what would you say, uh, Difficulty with persisting in tasks, difficulty in persistence, difficulty in motivational issues. Okay, so if somebody is very distractible, additionally, they're likely to have those similar behaviors. Those behaviors, those qualities, those traits will correlate with each other at a higher percentage rate than against a control group, for sure. So if we look at a population of people, we'll discover that similarly named traits are common in groups like so okay well people who are both cheerful and uh, likely to respond well to criticism those two things are going to correlate stronger than people who are not cheerful perhaps I don't know that might be the best example but there are others, plenty of other examples we can see <laughs> so simply finding that there is in fact a group of people who are towards the bottom end of the bell curve on issues of persistence, on issues of considered decision making, on issues of willingness to endure time that's non-consensual and stuff like that. Yeah, we are on the lower end of that bell curve. There's a, there, but there is on every single bell curve, there's going to be a population of people who are on the lower end of it. If you gather all those people together and you study them and say, let's see what traits are similar between these people, you do get good data on that, which traits correlate with the other traits in general. But you have not, by isolating a population of individuals that has difficulties in certain areas, cordoned off a disorder by any stretch of the imagination. To functionally be it to be a real disorder, in my opinion, now this is just my opinion, this is not some sort of like quoting quoting the DSM or something, although I don't know why you care about that. Hello, Ellie. I will, when we're done with this video right here, which will be, well, I'll try to keep it short, I would love to chat with you if you want to get on micro camera. So, um, anyway, the point is, that's not how you determine a disorder. So they say, well, okay, then fine, it's causing them real life problems. But the problem is this, just because somebody's having difficulty accomplishing things, just because somebody has procrastination issues, just because somebody's very distractible and forgets shit, all of those things that the people who are in this population uh, are prone to doing, that's the price to pay for the other end of the stuff that we're on the other end of the bell curve on. So that's simply the price we pay. Now, we're fortunate because the future has enabled us to not have to fight through those deficits with character as much as some other types do. I mean, look, it is possible for a ADHD person to fight through and be accomplished and learn behavioral modification techniques 
to implement them upon themselves and stuff like that um, without taking any kind of drugs and and make a good and happy life for themselves. It's certainly possible. Are they less likely to do so than other populations? Yeah, probably. I think that, you know, we're, it's a particularly challenging thing to be at the bottom of the bell curve on. But it doesn't make it a disorder, and all the evidence suggests, in fact, it's one of multiple configurations of the brain. So when I say evidence, what I'm saying is a configuration of a network, because not all brain networks are configured the same. Some of them have more long-range connection, and the localized the local nodes are going to be responsible for somewhat less work, I guess. And some of them have fewer long-range connections and rely more on a small world systems approach. And those tend to are going to be tend to be more sequential thinking and less less versatile. So it's a fair trade, in my opinion. Now, it's un what makes it unfair is that we can go and we should be able to, of course, because why shouldn't we be able to? But they're going to say, well, Eric, it's not a disorder. You shouldn't be able to get those drugs. Well, I disagree with you. I, I think that it's perfectly reasonable for a person to say, I benefit from these drugs. I don't have a disorder, but I benefit from these drugs and I want to take them. It's not, it's not like I need, I need why, why do I have to accept that my, my scatteredness is a medical problem before I can make myself less scattered? I don't know. Anyway, I don't accept that it's a medical problem. I think it's bullshit. I think most of the problems that ADHD people have in childhood stem from the fact that the slave masters are complaining that they're not behaving well enough. And that's the problem, is the slave masters, not the ADHD kids. It's not, the, the problem is not the kid who's, who's not being compliant while being forced to stay in a place he doesn't want to be for long periods of time. The problem is the adult who's forcing the child to stay in places he doesn't want to be for long periods of time. That's my position on ADHD. So when I say the difference between a pop, describing a problem and describing a population, to describe a problem, you need to compare something against a standard of normal, within the range of normal, right? So if, if in fact it's a configuration, like for example, you, you wouldn't call a, a, uh, a leopard damaged because it can't fly or swim, right? You just say, well, that's not what it's meant to do. And simply because somebody is optimal, would function much more optimally if the environment enabled more real stuff, not pretend stuff, and quicker, quicker return on time investment. Well, that's how the world's going, and it's a good thing. And and don't change ourselves; change the world. Also, change ourselves to the extent we want to. But we're not a problem to the extent that people are trying to force us to be ways we don't want to be. That's the fucking problem. To the extent that people are trying to pathologize our nature, that's the fucking problem. Thoughts? Thoughts on butterflies? Well, one thought I just want to throw out there, but I don't think it really merits too much discussion, is I think whatever it is, it's probably mis- and over- and wrongly diagnosed often, because most things are, especially when they're not actual physiological things. <laughs> well, how do you know if it's not misdiagnosed? How do you know if it's properly diagnosed? Exactly. So that's, that's the point. So it's not a disorder then. But I'm not saying people are getting medicated for it. I was, Am I? I was just throwing out there that it's not just people have been getting medicated for it. You see, that's the problem. I, that if you're going to do it as a doctor in a medical sense, then there needs to be some sort of diagnosis, in my opinion. And I think that doctors are idiots and they overdiagnose people like crazy. So, there's that aspect to it. I mean, I don't think that's the case with Adderall. I think it's, maybe tricky. Maybe I think it's tough to get it. It's really tough to get it. I mean, well, you gotta, maybe not anymore, but that's because it's such a big uh, abuse problem. 
But there's not a big abuse problem. Oh, yeah, there is. Okay, but here, here's the thing. You're assuming there's an abuse problem because a bunch of people who, quote-unquote, don't have ADHD are taking Adderall. That's not why I'm saying that. Okay, well, okay then. Good job. Thank you, Tiffany. That's how you argue. That's how you argue. Right <laughs> there. I didn't say that. I didn't make that claim. <laughs> okay, what did you say, Tiffany? Well, first of all, I think anyone who wants to take Adderall should be able to take Adderall. Even dogs? That, what? E even dogs? <laughs> If we had a way of uh, finding out that that was there, and I don't know, that's really stupid. Let's let's not go down that rabbit hole, please. Um, what I'm saying is, I think that in a medical sense, we can be pretty quick to to diagnose and treat things. Mm. When, especially when it's, you know, maybe not a disorder. The first thing I was going to say, and then I got sidetracked by my own head, was that I don't think it's as black and white as you're making it. I think that there's some truth to the whole idea of if it causes someone problems in their life, then it's a disorder, but not in the generalized sense that anyone that fits the model of ADHD and the way that it's currently defined has a disorder. But some people in that model probably do. I think the model's flawed. Don't go down the rabbit hole with your dog and Adderall. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? Well, with the symptoms of ADHD and ADD, there there a lot of people experience them anyways. But to be considered ADHD, they would have to have it to where it impairs their ability to function in certain areas. And then, so if people on the low ends of these bell curves, uh, is it right that they should be getting medication or? How should we be compensating for that? Well, I don't, I, I don't, I hate the idea of us having anything to do with it, right? The individual should have available to them and know, and there should be publicly available information that says, look, if you are somebody who feels as though um, you have a hard time getting work done, you have a hard time staying on task, maybe you want to try this and it might work for you. Be careful with it. It's addictive. And then the ball's in their court, right? Then you can't yeah. use it as an excuse for something. Oh, and my ADD is acting up again. Well, you better fucking take them out or all dickhead because you didn't get your work in. <laughs> right? That's, I mean, isn't that a much better answer than, oh, you have a disease? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so. I also think there's a... We probably don't know enough about how any of this stuff affects um, developing minds versus non-developing minds. I'm not sure about putting kids on it either. Look, I, I resisted putting Delilah on it until she was in high school. When she started failing in the ninth grade, Candace won the argument. I was I was arguing against it. It wasn't until after Delilah went on it that I started taking it. I said, like, Candace, that's just, just fucking speed. I'm gonna put my kid on speed. Are you crazy? But you know what? I ended up putting my kid on speed. And then I put me on speed too. It happens. I mean, you know, everybody else was freaking out about grades. Even Delilah was freaking out about grades. I was saying, like, Delilah, you need to walk into the school with both hands like this. You just walk through the day like this the whole time and just say, Fuck you all. I don't care about your stupid fucking grades or your stupid fucking classes. You can go fuck yourselves. That's what I told her to do that, but she wouldn't listen to me. Um, to go back to what you were saying about, like, you know, the supreme overlords or whatever. Who are our supreme overlords? Oh, you mean the doctors? The master, the master doctors who, who tell us if we're sick? Oh, I thought you were talking about the, the evil parents that were forcing the kids into the situations they didn't want to be in. I mean, I, I think there's collusion. There's there's non-collusion between everybody to do nothing to stop the fact that there's a fucked up status quo because we're all going like this. It's normal. It's normal. Well, so a story I often tell is about how, you know, I was I was hated school growing up. I would always get these report cards talking about how 
I was very smart. I learned all the material. I did really well on the test, but I wasn't going to get a good grade because I didn't do the homework, and I would get all pissed off because, I mean, what's the point? I mean, I obviously learned the material. That was the point of going to school, and the point of doing the homework was to help reinforce that, but I clearly didn't need that, so what the fuck's the point? And, and that's my argument on that matter. The point is to keep it. your little hands busy, mister. Okay. Well, no, I'm here. <laughs> so I have this argument with my mom all the time, who I'm not go down that road, but she's an ENTJ, and her response to me is, and it's actually a very good argument, which is, pisses me off. Um, she says, the point of the homework isn't to teach you the material, or to reinforce it, or to help you do well on the test, or any of that. The point of the homework is to teach you how to do something you don't want to do, because you're going to have to deal with shit you don't want to deal with in life a lot, and you should learn how to do it when you're a kid. Well, then life needs to fucking change. That's the problem. I want to answer Ellie's question. Ellie, do you, can you, do you have a mic? Can you get on mic by any chance? Ellie has no microphone. Ellie doesn't have a microphone. That's why she's moved into the old folks' home. Ellie doesn't have a microphone. Okay, well then let's see what her question was in the chat. She said, are you guys able to concentrate for a long time with the meds? I have not been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, oh, and just... I am not currently on meds, so I'm not going to speak for this. Yeah, I, 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 don't think, I don't think anybody else in here self-identifies as an Adderall patient. Uh, yeah, I can concentrate for long-ass times. In fact, sometimes I sit, down, I sit in the chair too long and my fucking ankles get, start getting swollen up because... I need to get up and walk around, you know. Uh, yeah, I can concentrate the shit out of anything. But when you're off it, can you not concentrate? Well, that was that's the weird thing. Last time I was off it for like a week, I was just as active on TWFP as I was not on it, and I was getting my shit handled, like SI stuff, like cleaning up and stuff like that. So I I don't know what to make of that. I think it has to do with the fact that I can't, I have difficulty doing shit that I don't think is important or, or that I don't want to do. I, I just have trouble think, doing shit I don't, I don't want to do. So it's like, I like to do this, this is fun. It's not, it's not entirely carefree, there's a little bit of work aspect to it. At the end, when I upload it, I gotta go and tag them out and stuff like that. And it's always, it always, I go like, <sighs> but whatever. It's a small enough task to do, you know. So then I split it up and I'll, I'll go away for an hour and I come back and do another one, another five minute task, and then go away, come back and do another five minute task. Okay, let's stop this video and then let's proceed on to another one. That's my little spiel about populations and problems, people and persimmons. How many persimmons would it take to bribe you to waive this registration fee?